Hello and welcome to Computer Tech and More. Today we're going to talk about my brand new hard drive, the Iron Wolf Pro NAS 20 terabyte hard drive and talk about some of its features, advantages, disadvantages versus um, the Exos and Western Digital hard drives. So I have been a uh, mostly a Western Digital user for I don't know, the last 10 plus years. And lately I've started buying a few Seagates because um, I've decided to give them uh, another try. I had bad experiences back in the early mid 2000s, but uh, that's been a long time. So we're giving them another go. And I've been happy with uh, the Seagates that I do currently own. So this is my, uh, I believe second 20 terabyte hard drive. And we're going to talk about it versus a 16 terabyte, but I'm going to use reference numbers for a 20 terabyte uh, drive. And then we're going to do uh, some testing. Here's the data from my standardized Crystal Disk Mark uh, data test with the newest Iron Wolf Pro here at the bottom 20 terabyte. And it achieved 290 uh, read and 290 write. The Exos version received 290 two and 294. So pretty much within margin of error, the Exos being slightly faster. A 16 terabyte Western Digital Red Pro achieved 264 and 266. Uh, the Iron Wolf Pro 16, 273 and 278. And Exos 18, 282 and 291. And then you can see the other hard drives. The, this test was at sequential Q1, M1, or I'm saying, Sequential Q1M at uh, Q8T1, if you're looking at uh, Crystal Dismark, uh, three runs at eight gigabytes. The next test is a sequential 4M Q depth one uh, threads one, again, three at eight, with the Iron Wolf Pro here at the bottom, achieving 289 and 288. Rounding up, you could say 290 and 289. Very similar to the Exos again, with the Exos just beating out by a little bit. And the uh, Red Pro, I'm not sure what happened here with the 16 terabyte Iron Wolf Pro. Um, but again, these are the performance metrics that I achieved when I ran the test. Your results may vary a little bit. All right, the next one is a random QDepth 32 uh, threads 8. And this is not where uh, hard drives are at their best, but it's good to test anyways. So the Exos uh, really punch way above their weight class in the right performance here. Um, so if uh, you need a lot of random, uh, random writes, I guess, on your hard drive, the Exos is clearly just the one to get. But if you're more like a standard user, they're all basically the same. The Pro doing a little bit better than some of the other ones, but it's not where hard drives really are good if you need good random performance, get an SSD. And then uh, the last one is random 4K, QDepth 1, uh, Threads 1. And again, the Exos do a little bit better. The uh, Iron Wolves do a little bit better than Western... Oh, nope, there's a Western Digital. Never mind. But uh, there we are. And then my standardized uh, write test is next. And for this, I uh, transfer 12 gigs now because SSDs are so darn fast that uh, otherwise it'd be done faster than I can re record the data. Um, where I transfer the... Uh, three files totaling 12 gigs onto a hard drive or SSD. So it's a write test. And there are no other write tests being performed at the same time. And the hub that is used is a, uh, a USB 3 external enclosure. And I do have a couple notes. So right here, the Iron Wolf Pro 16, 80 and 80, I learned that if I turn off the enclosure, it has a power button, and I leave it connected, uh, it errors out, and I lose half the performance of the hard drive. But if I unplug it, plug it back in, uh, this is the, the USB plug, I get all the performance back. So um, because these hard drives are in use, I, I can't retest them at the moment. 
but that explains why these are so low. I was, I had been running other hard drives and I was like, why am I losing performance when I was doing uh, some data offloading and figured out why. Uh, but anyways, on to the actual data. The Iron Wolf Pro 20 terabyte achieved 264. The Exos 20, 276. So you, again, you're seeing the same basic trends where the Exos does a little bit better in performance. And then the uh, Red Pro Western Digital it's a little bit slower at 259. We need to ignore this data. I'm sure it's actually higher. Unfortunately, again, I can't retest it right now. The Exos 18 is at 258. Western Digital Pro, 260. So you might uh, see why I have a bunch of different model hard drives and I buy them at, uh, I don't buy them from the same vendor at the same time because I run a, a RAID setup. So that way, if uh, one hard drive fails, uh, it's unlikely to affect the rest because if that way um, specific hard drive from a specific vendor or sp a particular um, line of hard drive, so when it came off the, the production floor, has an error, that it won't affect all the hard drives. So, for example, if I buy an Exos from Western Digital, I'd buy another one from, um, no, did I say Western Digital? New Egg and Amazon. Uh, so that way I hopefully get slightly different uh, models. So when they came off the production where there's a little bit of difference, so that way I don't get two broken hard drives at the same time. Or you can split up by doing different brands. Uh, obviously, this can potentially be more expensive. Um, I might as well note it here. The Iron Wolf I bought on Black Friday sale for $329. Uh, regular price is normally closer to four to five hundred. I know I gave a big range there. Um, I have all the products linked, listed down below. But so when you buy what's on sale, whatever you can afford, but if you have the opportunity to split up your pricing or your models, then I recommend doing that. All right. Now that we finished the testing, Let's talk about uh, some of the technological features of these hard drives. So they're all CMR, which stands for uh, Conventional Magnetic Recording uh, Technology, as opposed to SMR, which is shingled. Shingled has uh, reduced um, write speeds as compared, compared to uh, conventional methods. They're all 7200 RPM hard drives. The regular Western Digital and uh, the Plus series are like... Uh, 5400 I believe so you'll get a uh, similar type performance from all of them as we saw from my performance data the sustained writes according to the spec sheet is uh, 285 megabits per second for both these and this one is rated or the 20 terabyte model for this Western Digital is 268 megabits per second uh, the cache size is 256 megabytes while the western digital is 512. Uh, what that means for real world performance uh, doesn't actually mean that much but it means that this can cache a little bit more so it might be a little bit more responsive in day-to-day -day use but you're probably not really going to see anything because they are spinny disk hard drives. Um, the workload or I'm sorry mean time between failure for the pro is 1.2 million hours the Exos is 2.5 million hours, and the Western Digital is 1 million hours. So that would be on time. And the workload rating is 300 terabytes per year, 550 terabytes per year, and 300 terabytes per year. So that means if you're doing a lot of reading and writing, the Exos might be the best bet. But if you're just doing kind of standard user stuff, then the pros are kind of probably more up your alley, but um, with a lot of the same features, you could just get whichever one is cheaper. And they all feature five-year warranties. So what's the pro, pro, haha, the advantage for the Western Digital, I'm sorry, Seagate uh, Iron Wolf Pro, that uh, the other ones don't really come with, specifically more like the Exos, because we want to compare brands here. So this comes with uh, recovery services, as well as the Iron Wolf Health Report. So um, I found with my Seagate NAS that it, uh, you can uh, load up the software. And so when you're looking at hard drive health, 
it'll have Iron Wolf Health, uh, specifically because Iron Wolves and um, other Seagate models uh, don't inherently with like um, uh, hard drive or yeah, hard drive info. Uh, don't pick up all the data. It uh, looks a little weird, so you need to actually load it up with Seagate's own custom technology while Western Digital will display properly. But the amount of information each one shows may be different with that software. And certain key factors of information are what's important uh, for determining how long a hard drive is going to last when it starts to fail. Um, as with any of my hard drives, I always check its um, health info first thing. That was the software, Crystal Disk Info. Um, whenever I buy a new hard drive, just to be sure that I'm getting what I expect, I check Crystal Disk Info and make sure that it has zero on time, or zero number of cycles on, as well as uh, making sure that it's got uh, zero read hours. That way I know I'm buying a brand new hard drive. It's just a simple check and it'll display any errors in it. And then the second step is I do, I do is I run uh, Crystal Disk Mark. I run the testing software to make sure that it's running kind of properly. Now this isn't a surefire way because uh, errors can happen in hard drives later on. Um, for example, uh, a couple hundred hours into using it, it just uh, errors out. Electronics either wear out early or late and very little kind of in the middle. So if you make it past probably the first month, you're probably okay for it to run a long, long time. Uh, and the crystal disk mark, just so I check how it compares to other hard drives, and I run my uh, standard data transfer test where I write to the hard drive um, because that's kind of the worst case scenario and writing is normally slow anyways, and I want to make sure my hard drive is fast. Um, and then lastly, I'm going to install the hard drive into my NAS, and that'll be the very last part of this video where I exchange one of my 10 terabytes, not this one, but in the bracket, and install it in my NAS, and I guess I'll show the steps for that. It'll be very similar to my uh, Exos 20 terabyte uh, drive. All right. Now that we've finished uh, going over the different drives and everything, let's go ahead and get it installed into my NAS. So the first thing is to get out the bracket. So uh, here's the bracket that is used on a Synology NAS, and it's very simple to use. You just uh, pop the lever, or pop the, the retainer, and then you slide the hard drive out. Um, I put the hard drive upside down just so the circuit board is not touching, or if you have an anti-static bag, you go ahead and put it on that. Uh, next, we take the new hard drive, we put it in, slide it all the way back, make sure everything is situated properly. Ah, uh, I'm smart. I promise I know what I'm doing. Yeah, make sure that the, uh... The plugs are facing the back. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, that's the disadvantage of doing stuff on camera. <laughs> uh, then you uh, slide into place. Make sure it feels nice and tight. Then you do the other side. Put it in the back. It's got the little pins, pegs. And then you push, lock it in. And then it's nice and locked into place. All right. Here's my NAS. Let's install the hard drive. Push it in. Close the bottom. And then let's lock it up so we don't accidentally ever pull it out. All right, let's go to the software. All right, here we are. We can see that my uh, Synology software says that my um, volume is degraded. I have Synology Hybrid RAID 2. So I need to go ahead and get that hard drive uh, up and running. So what I need to do is come over from Overview to Storage Pool and come over and say Action, Repair, and then it'll ask me uh, which hard drive I want to initialize. And this is the uh, new hard drive. I select Next. It gives me a warning. 
is another warning. And then I'm about to repair and apply. And now my new hard drive is initialized and healthy and the storage pool is repairing itself. Um, hybrid ray two, so two drive redundancy while I'm here. Data scrubbing, I have that turned on with a schedule. And I have uh, each folder with a, um, a checksum, oh, excuse me, checksum check so that um, bit rot is largely prevented. Over here, I have a little display window and um, it'll tell me what's going on with the hard drive. So it started consistency check. It told me that the hard drive was, that my uh, storage was degraded and now everything's working. All right, uh, this will go for probably a couple days. It's only 0.05% uh, complete right now. Um, if your hard drives are more than five years old, you may want to just upgrade them anyways. But if nothing's wrong with them, you may not need to. Uh, I tend to upgrade when I periodically need to. I didn't specifically need more storage space, but I'm starting to look at getting a second NAS for my backup solution. So uh, I'm basically getting my 10 terabytes out, moving everything to the newest higher capacity to fill up the second NAS with my old hard drives for the backup solution because it'll be uh, basically a write-only application. Um, anyways, this is where I'm finishing up. And uh, thank you very much for watching my video about the Seagate uh, Iron Wolf Pro uh, 20 terabyte hard drive. And uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Have a great day.